Hello everyone, so this is sort of to say uh, part 2 of the PBR shader setup and today we're gonna make this shader a bit more usable for tileable materials. So last up we uh, built this, it's a pretty basic shader setup, but we want some extended functionality for the tileables. And I have a little material that I'm gonna test this on, this is just for presentation purposes, but if you want a if you want to get this material you can get it down in the description it's completely for free uh, just for presentation purposes of course so uh, what we're gonna do first we're gonna copy this and make a duplicate here by clicking Control D and I'm gonna add like an underscore here and say tileable so I want MPBR tileable so it's the same material I just duplicated it and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change the UVs of all of these here, all of the textures. That is that extend and functionality we're talking about. So first things first, we're gonna do texture coordinate and we're gonna go into a multiply. So what we want here is we want to tile this material. So two times, three times, how, how many ever times you want. And now there's a few ways to do this. You can bring out a uh, vector like this and then change the values in the RGB values. But that's kind of a hassle. I just like to bring out a scalar parameter by pressing S plus left click. And I do tile U and just copy that over. And this is gonna be tile V. And it's UV, I like, you can do X and Y. I like UV, um, U and V for, um, clearance purposes, but it really depends up to you here. And now we can't put both of these in this multiply, so we need to make them one thing. And for that we do append vector. And we're gonna append these two and make them into a vector. And I'm gonna set one for each of these, uh, because we don't want it to tile zero. and uh, we are going to plug this into all of the UVs as I want to show you how this works. Uh, we don't have an emissive but we're gonna plug it uh, anyways. So let's save this real quick and we're gonna go to the main level and I'm gonna create an instance and this is just gonna be a tileable 01 and I'm gonna put MI for instance just like this and I'm gonna open this up and in here we have quite a lot of things that we would like to change but for now uh, let's just enable all of these and I'm gonna put the normal map the occlusion roughness and metallic and the base color and now I can place this here and you can see we have our simple material showing here uh, what we can change with this tile U and V as you can see we can change how many times it tiles we can tile this 5 by 5 if we wanted to now you can see that's pretty visible but if we want that we can. We can also enlarge it, so to say, by tiling it by some lower numbers, like 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. Doesn't really matter. Now, I do have a problem here with emissive intensity, and I'm gonna fix that just real quick. I'm just gonna put this into the controls, and that's it. Uh, <clears throat> now, we do have, like, this global scalar parameters, parameter values. This means that tile U and V don't have their own group, and we're gonna make that group by saying tileable controls. And uh, they should both be in it, yeah? And I want this one to be first and this one to be second. Simple as, and when I save this, it updates and now we have tileable controls here. So let's continue on with making the material. <clears throat> Next up, we're just gonna quickly um, comment this and say tile control and just choose whichever color you like. Doesn't really matter much. Now, we want to be able to rotate the texture because sometimes this is very valuable. You want 
uh, to rotate it for whatever reason, like you maybe have a different kind of way it should be applied. It doesn't really matter, like rotation of textures is, is a pretty basic functionality that we should have in our tileable texture material. So I'm gonna bring out a, a node called custom rotator. Here it is. And this basically rotates the UVs. And rotation center is where the rotation is gonna happen. And the rotation angle is pretty self-explanatory. It's by how many degrees we're gonna rotate it. Or in this, uh, in this case, it's zero to one. So it's not in degrees, it's a bit confusing, but it still works. You can do some maths to actually turn this into degrees, but we're not gonna do that today. Uh, so basically, what we want here, the rotation center, I usually bring out a constant and set it to 0 0.5. So it's in the center of the UV tile, so to say. And now this is a vector two, you will see that. And we're inputting a vector one, so to say. But if we are inputting a vector one, it will just say that those both of those values are 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, as you can see in the default value, meaning that our thing is in the center like that center in the texture, and that's where it's going to rotate it. You can change this, and you can make this even a constant, sorry, a parameter, but uh, I don't see much value in that really, because it's... Um, you. I, I, I never used any other rotation center, so I wouldn't do that personally, but if you do, feel free. Uh, the next thing, we're going to bring a scalar, and I'm going to do a rotation angle and we're going to leave it at zero and i'm going to comment this and say rot rotation control and just going to set something up for it and i'm going to place this into tileable controls and going to give this three the sort of priority value of three and uh, now we don't need to like go ahead and plug all of these into these again we can just press control on this one and pull all these pins into here. And now just reconnect this one. And we're gonna click save. And now when we go here, we can open up our PBR material here. And you see another thing popped up here, it's rotation angle. And if I say 0 0.4, 0 0.5, it did rotate 180. If I say 0.25, see, this is again a nice rotation angle. We can we can have some fun with this, like 0 0.05. See, you can get some pretty cool angles. Just um, be wary; it will not. Uh, it's the tiling is gonna have a problem at certain points and seams, but all in all, it's a pretty um, pretty good thing to have because sometimes you might want to flip the whole texture upside down. Doesn't matter really. It's totally up to you. So you can even flip it 90 degrees like this by inputting 0 0.25. Uh, but pretty much it's a, it's a good thing to have in your arsenal of tools. And let's move on to the next thing. And the next thing is gonna be offset. So offset is also really important because we want to have the ability to offset certain parts uh, well, the whole texture, if we want to, in certain areas, because sometimes we might not want that offset, we want it to be a bit somewhere over there, or wherever you want them to be, so you just want to have that as a functionality. So, how we do that is we add a add node by A and left click, and plug this into A. So, what we're going to have in B is a pretty similar setup, it's literally like this, the same thing we do here, we are gonna do here. It's just a different node here. So here we're gonna have offset U, and here it's gonna be offset V, and we append that into a vector, and just plug it into the B value. And this is our offset control. I'm gonna color code it. And the only difference really here is that we are not multiplying the coordinates, we are actually just adding to them. Pretty self-explanatory. So we can um, keep these at one and one and one, I think. Now we're gonna uh, just pull these all these pins here into this and 
just drag this here. There we go. And uh, we should save this real quick and let's go. So uh, we have another thing here and now you can see that it's kind of messed up. So we want to add here four and five as their sort priorities. So we have nice sorting here, as you can see. And now, as you can see, I can offset these textures however I like. And the tiling should, the tiling, yeah, the tiling kind of fucks up, but it's still uh, a very useful thing to do. Because see, you can move the texture wherever you want it to be. And if we place that zero, zero, yeah, it shouldn't, uh, it should affect nothing. So as you can see, uh, it's pretty, pretty simple, pretty interesting what you can do with this. And if I rotate this cube a little bit like this, so we can see both sides, you can see how the texture is going on the cube. And also for the up and down is the same thing. Pretty, pretty good thing to have. I'm going to keep mine at zero and zero and let's save. And now for the last part, this is arguably the most important part or the most fun is parallax occlusion or height map usage. Now, as of Unreal Engine 5.3, you can also use displacement right here if you use some nodes. Uh, and if you use a console command, but we're not going to do that right now because that still is performance heavy and we want something a bit cheaper. And even though parallax occlusion mapping isn't really cheap, uh, we, it's still cheaper than just displacing the mesh with a bunch of polygons. So what we are to bring here is parallax occlusion mapping. This really, really big and scary um, node. So what we need here is a height map texture and we need to plug this into the UVs. These are our UVs here, as you can see. And we need a few things, just a few things. So height map channel, we just need this to leave it as it is, like so, just a black value. Uh, it's completely okay to do this. Uh, and what we need is a height ratio. So let's do displacement intensity. Sorry, intensity. And let's just put it right away into tileable controls and this should be like seven, I, I believe. No. So height ratio, there we go. And now what do we do for height texture? We need an actual height map for this. So if I bring out this here, uh, we cannot actually plug it in. As you can see, it's, well, it's not really working. It's just, um, yeah, it's a bit weird. But uh, what we actually need to do is just use this and we should see, uh, or we don't actually see it. That's kind of weird. Oh, so uh, I guess uh, we can do a straight up from this. So instead of a texture sample, you do a texture object, as you can see, and this can be plugged in here. And now we can convert this to a parameter and call this height map. Simple as, that's all there is to it. Just a height map and we can actually control it within our uh, texture and we can grab this here and say, um, textures. I want these in the textures file. So just put this five here and that should be good to go. So let's just parallax UVs and plug this back into the UVs and save. So once it's done saving, uh, we shall go to our material and I actually forgot to import my height map. So let me do that real quick. Sorry about that. So my height map might not be the best for this presentation, but let me show you how this works. So basically the parallax occlusion just stacks uh, and fakes the feeling of there being more, um, there being actual geometry when in reality it isn't. And if you bump it too high, you get this very trippy effect that doesn't, um, 
yeah, it's cool, but it's not what you wanted, probably. So this should be in really low values, like really, really low values. And now you might see just a little bit of change. So I'm going to do like, well, not 0.5, 0 0.5. And if I do zero, it's just, it's very, it's a very small change. And it's really very, very hardly noticeable but you can actually uh, see it and it's a pretty it's a pretty good thing to have and it fakes that this has a bit more detail than it actually does so it's a pretty good thing to have you might not want to use it if you're looking for something more optimized but for some small like more detail um, thing you want to do it's perfectly fine and it's a really good tool to just add just a tiny bit of that um, feel that it kind of pops out that the material actually is growing so to test all of this we can just have now and play around with all all the settings we have uh, I can set this I can set this to be some darker stone I can set the AO intensity to one that makes it kind of kind of look cool we can uh, maybe set it to 0 0.5 or to 0 0.8. We can now play around with so many things. Roughness, we can have it be a little res less rough. We can have the specular value go up. Uh, emissive, uh, we didn't set it up. We set it up with the actual um, texture, not with the, with the base color, but you can do either way, it doesn't really matter. And in normal intensity, we can bump it, we can lower it if we feel like it. It's just a complete material shader that you can use for everything you want to. So maybe we want more tiles here, we can just add them up. We want uh, the rotation of like 90 degrees, we can do that as well. And it's a pretty simple thing and you can tweak a lot of things. It's just really handy to do so. It's, it's a really handy material that is... In all my projects, when I start them, it's like just a basic setup that you need for every single material you're um, ever going to import. And anything else you might need, you just copy this material and then add a little bit on top of it. Because almost this is like a really modular material that can do wonders for you. And it just needs a little bit of additions for some custom stuff that you may want or may not want. So... This is it for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot from it and I hope I see you in the next one.